Welcome to Hello Dysfunction. Episode 247. Small town girl reporting in. And Potafria. <laughs> Here we are. Welcome back. I'm Crystal. I, I said who I am. I called the cops again today. Did you? It's funny because that was my first note is that 911 was down yesterday. Was it? Yeah. Like all of the major cell phone networks, AT&T, T-Mobile. Did you have issues? Uh, not Sprint. What's the uh, Verizon? Um, I don't know because I don't be on the phone. So I had issues with my phone. It kept yeah. going to SOS. Wait, which mean, when oh. my phone goes SOS, it means I have no service. Oh. So it would go in and out. Normally so, where I have reception. It was down for quite a while. And I, I just, so I only irritated. knew about it because I saw people talking about it on social media. And so I was like, well, why aren't we purging? If there's no 911, we should be fucking robbing banks, banks and shit right now. For yeah. Real. Y'all ain't down for shit. I didn't know 911 was down. That's mm-hmm. actually scary. It made me excited. <laughs> like, let's commit some crimes while we have time. That part, yes. But then I think of like people about to be fucking raped or murdered or which that guns. makes me a little scared yeah but today when i was picking up naya from school there's a park and uh <laughs> you wait your turn for real <laughs> bitch um i was picking naya up from school and my window's down i'm smoking and i keep hearing someone talking to my left like on this side street And I keep hearing the N word with an A, right? Like Mm -hmm. 500 times. And I'm like, who the fuck is repeating that? Because I look, it's not a black dude. Okay. So that's already getting on my nerves. It's a guy. Mm -hmm. Well, then I notice he's trying to call high school girls over from the park. Saying that word? He's easily mid to, I don't know. But I hear him saying, come here, come here to these high school girls. He's mid twenties easily. Mm-mm. Hello, nine one one. We have a predator by the park. Cause for real, fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. Yes. What are you even doing right here? Well, don't talk to anybody coming out that school. Coming to find out, one of the girls that goes to the school knows him, and he's known. He's over twenty five. And he's known for dating high school girls. Oh my fucking god! So, bitch, nine one one, get here now. <sighs> Search his shit. Mm-hmm. Take him in. Mm-hmm. You're gross. Because yeah. why? Why are you a grown man dating over twenty five dating children? Yep. That's disgusting. That's so disgusting. Um, I was on a certain person's Facebook not long ago, a certain influencer or whatever that we've spoke about in the past and her past kept coming up and her like trying to make excuses or whatever because she's accused of dating super young people. And there, there's a lot of women in the comments and it made me so sick. Um, I was was 16 dating a 30 year old. I was this. I was that. All of you bitches are victims. And I'm sorry that you don't realize it yet. I hope that one day you will. And I hope that you don't have children and you think it's okay for them to do the same because you were a victim and you don't realize it. You don't realize you're so you think you're grown at 16. Yeah, we thought we ran. the Exactly. You're so easily manipulated by grown adults especially if you don't have adult presence in your life yes and yeah we know all about that firsthand and we did we were also victims like we also were dating people we had no fucking business being around 14 with a 21 year old yeah what and i mean it took a while i i remember years ago i made a post like it's a crazy revelation when you reach a certain age and you realize oh my God, like we were around hella predators and so were all of our friends. Pedophiles. Yeah, like why are um, why are all these, you know, women not realizing that and, and like defending the behavior? Think about it like this. At 21, if, if you're going after a 14, 15 year old girl, she's only had her period for like three fucking years. That's disgusting. That's hella fucking gross. 
That's hella gross. You're a pedo. Get the fuck away from this park. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Bitch, call me Karen. Call me cop caller. I don't care. You're not going to yeah. victimize fucking children no. in my presence. No, that's so gross. And it's like, um, yeah, there's just no excuse for it. And I'm thinking like the guys that like don't check their friends about it and, Ugh. and like let them bring young girls around. And like, I know some that 100% do Absolutely. and would, but then what about all the guys that are just like, she's legal. She's legal. Like she wanted being to legal does not make it not weird. Like 18. I'm sorry. I don't care if you're like 32. What the fuck are you doing with an 18 year old? Those gaps like, and they want love to bring up celebrities and, and age gaps in their dating history. And I'm like, it's very different when you're 30 and 50 yes. compared to when yes. you're 30 and 14. You know what yes. I mean? Like it's not the same argument anymore. No, it's it, very gross. It's hella gross gross it's hella predatory and anybody uh, well in every state it's different but for shits and giggles let's say 18 because that's when you're air quote an adult Mm -hmm. if you're under that age you can't fucking give consent i don't give a fuck no if you said well she said she wanted to he said he wanted to their kids i saw a guy i know um on social media today and he was saying something the age question came up again and and then um they were like so it's okay to fuck them but just not date them and he was like yeah as long as she's legal so as long as she's 18 and you're like in your 30s so i'm just shaking my head like y'all don't get it you don't fucking get it like maybe because this person isn't a parent yet but like why does that have to make you realize it's gross you should already know that's gross you at your big grown age fucking an 18 year old as long as they're legal that's gross that doesn't you're feel, a fucking weirdo they literally damn near still in school yeah you're going to the high school to pick up your girlfriend and you're a grown adult or your boyfriend yeah it's disgusting it's disgusting fucking check I, t- I told the story i had a cousin we were in middle school we were at Juan crespi we were 12 we were 12 her boyfriend was 27 he had a fucking like low rider and That's I was real jealous. Pedo. He would come bring her McDonald's to school. He would pick her up every day from school. I remember being was jealous and being like, does he have friends? Like, I want a boyfriend too. Like, I want a boyfriend to pick me up instead of my grandma. Like, and thinking like, That's oh, she's me. lucky. And her parents knew him and allowed it. And I'm just thinking now, what? now looking back, I'm just like, what in the fucking fuck? They should have been calling the police. The mom should have been and fucking mm-hmm. arrested and both her parents are in the home mom and dad she has this protective dad it's funny how like the most protective dads be allowing a lot of fucking bullshit it's weird it's, i know a lot of examples and it's fucking weird that's so gross it. yeah it's it, it infuriates me when i seen him doing that shit i was like you got me so fucked up get the fuck out of here hanging out talking about Kamir. And, and the 911 dispatcher was like oh no we're sending a unit over right now good quickly yeah girl you know if i seen a man calling bunny over when she got out of school i'm going to jail they're gonna call him for me yeah because i'm going to jail oh i'm so fucking irritated and it's funny because naya told her friends my mom calls the cops for anything she calls them for anything don't do shit around my mom because i said I, oh well i'd like that to be a known thing don't fuck around around my daughter then exactly yeah if someone's fine. in danger <laughs> then i'm calling yeah i'm not calling I'll to wear be a that stupid jacket. bitch yeah yeah if someone's in danger i'm fucking calling especially mm-hmm. like i was telling you before we started my tax dollars go to Israel and that infuriates me, but we're going to make sure the ones here, you're going to earn that you're fucking paycheck. Yeah, Absolutely. You are. Fucking get over here. Mm-hmm. Get this. Search his fucking vehicle. Yeah. God. Fucking prick. Oh, and he was in a car? Yes. Even grosser. You know, I done gave the license plate number. Oh my I God. remember, you know me, I'm I remembered so everything. I'm so glad. Stay the fuck away from children. Yeah. And tell your friends. Go hang at the liquor Spread store. Spread the word. Yeah. Because the cops will be called every time. I hope you took his picture. No, I didn't. That I didn't do. Next time. But you see him again. I made it obvious. I pulled up literally right behind the car. You blocked him in. I did. I was like half a car space behind him. You slammed on your brakes and locked him in. I pulled up right behind his car. Like, you're tripping. 
Not it's today. Disgusting. Not on my watch. Nope. Not on my neighborhood watch. Oh no, no. Fuck out of here. Um. So we're allowed to change our minds. And yes. Uh, last week, Sunday and Wednesday, I got two tattoos on my stomach. Mm hmm. I might not be totally against the anesthesia to get tattooed uh, situation. Fuck out. I thought you were about to talk about the other thing. What? Who we vote for allowed to change our minds. Oh, no, no, no. No. So what I'm saying is I w- the second one goes well into like the ribs. Nope. I was going to quit. I was going to quit the first line. That's a really sensitive area. The first line, I was going to quit, and I was going to be like, oh, well, and if anybody asks, it'll be a good story to tell. Like, I'll just tell them. I started it, and I could not fucking handle it. You manned it. up. Um, he made me. Good. He was Thank like, we're going to try. We're going to just try. Come on. He let me keep taking breaks. If I was at a shop, or if this was not a good friend of mine, they'd have told me to go the fuck home. Seriously. I love that he coached you through it. I was in a pool of sweat. I was like, sh- oh, my God. I was like so tense and like, I'm going to cry. I kept telling him I'm about to start crying. And I was like yelling. P- P's totally ignoring me. She's on the couch. I was getting tattooed at my house. Um, I'm on the table. She's ignoring me. She's playing Roblox or whatever. She's um, like, not even she tripping. Goes. I'm yelling. I'm like, oh, my fucking God, yelling. Um, but, you know, you have to open. You have to outline first. So you could get the skin open to get numbing spray, numbing cream, yes. whatever you want to use. The skin has to be open in order for that to take effect. So you have to go through hell on earth to even have that option. Did you use it? Did I? I drank it. It never would have been finished. Never. I was going to just stop. I was like, I don't even care. Like, we could stop. We could try again some other time. I don't know if it's like, today is just not the day. You know, you have to be in the mood to be hurt i've talked about you know that when before. you're on your period too or b- right before your period you're the most sensitive of course so yeah. when you get like botox or yeah. needles or any you know anything like that it'll hurt way more too that's not the case in this situation no you um, just was like no it it's hurt. just i just um well i passed because i was gonna get tattooed one of these days like i don't know what day it was sunday or something i was gonna get to or no i think i did get tattooed. one of them days i was going to and i was just like you know what i'm tired and they hurt worse when i'm tired yeah. like i need to have some energy in me um but and so i thought i was kind of ready but i had a headache that day and so maybe mm. my body was just like we're, we're not in the mood um but it was so fucking bad and I did a like a 14 needle, which is like a really thick, thick, thick. That's what I want is like I, I'd i be willing to do more outline tattoos if it's a big, thick ass needle. You know what I mean? I don't like fine line stuff. I don't either. Um, I like traditional old school looking thick Same. needle. And so this is a thicker needle than I think he's ever used. I don't on like how of uber details. It look it hurts so much worse than any of <laughs> those other needles, and I didn't really consider that, I guess, before. But um, he had to spray me like four different times. But once he did, it helped. I didn't feel a thing. Oh, I not love it. a fucking thing. And the, it's magic. The numbing spray that he uses, you have to be like a licensed whatever to buy yeah. it. You get it from the tattoo supply company. You can't. It's not over the counter. Yeah, it's just lidocaine. You know, right. whatever per- percentage. But that shit. I wonder. So you know, they have lidocaine patches, right? Mm-hmm. I wonder if you put one on before you get a tattoo. The skin has to be broken. So well, I don't no, think... for lidocaine to um patches, they work for pain. Mm-hmm. So. I That's wonder, what this is. It's lidocaine cream. Right. Or but spray. I'm, but I'm wondering if you put it on first, the patch, and leave it there for a while, if maybe it would help a little bit with breaking the line open. I doubt it. Because it has to get into your skin before it even... Because I've had them try to sp- use the same shit on the outside. Um, I think Lex might have tried before, before we broke the skin, and it doesn't. Or if they... Or if it doesn't sit long enough, and you know how they're wiping, if it like gets wiped out while they're going it it'll wear off super fast so. i'm one i wonder it might be just like worth a shot my i know my old lady wears it on her her knees yeah i have to change them mm-hmm. try it i'll prove you I, wrong but try it i'm gonna tr- I, i'm mm-hmm. gonna just see it might Do fucking help for an experiment. but i just know that when we did just this little part on the bone right here it was remember and i'm that's sweating a pretty, that's a pretty thick 
uh, outline. Needle. Remember, I was yeah. sweating. Yeah, and it hurt hella bad. It's bad. So I can only imagine on the fucking ribs. It was just. It felt like tearing into me. It just mm. felt like I was being murdered, and I was like, "This is not a good imagine time." Imagine getting that shaded after. Yeah, I did. Oh, <laughs> like, God. I did. Did you? Yeah, I did. I didn't even and realize. I was just like, this is just a line is making me want to kill myself. It feels like I'm being murdered. So that I'm feeling, down oh. to quit. I'm down to quit. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm a quitter. And I was laying there like, you know, some people and we're women, you know what I'm saying? That have been through childbirth and right. shit like that, which takes a, you know, a huge, it's a huge pain level. Um, and I'm just thinking not everybody, maybe I shouldn't be so judgy about people that can't take pain and still want art. You know what I mean? And Yeah, but I think doing your full body is, you're doing much. What do you mean? Going under anesthesia and getting like fucking 50. But like, what if they just cheater. got one area? And they, I mean, maybe not, I don't know. I, listen, if I could have got like... <laughs> the body version of a dental block you know what i mean but like on a body part <laughs> no to do it, i would do it i would do it i was laying there like i would fucking do it because i had all these plans for my sternum and shit that i was gonna also do that night and i was like that's never gonna happen in my life never yeah i want one never like here. i have one in the center now and that i almost didn't get through either so really? i'm just like in order for me to do these big plans i had fuck i'm gonna say fuck these plans because i can't do it I cannot fucking do it. Yeah, but I think you could. Neil coached you through. Only because of that spray. That His coaching did not get me through it. It was the spray. Like, just knowing that, like, if I could just handle feeling like I'm being murdered by Jason for a few more minutes. Um, It'll be gone. The, the then, spray. Then, yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's the only thing that got me through it. It was like, otherwise, Torturous. fuck it. Yeah, otherwise, I'm just not going to do those areas. And I think about all these people, like, I know all these tiny, tiny people that have everything, mm -hmm. head to toe, everything. And I'm like, how? How? I mean, it's true. Everybody really does feel things differently. Yes. It's not the same across the board. Yes, Naya, we were just talking about this yesterday. Naya's mm -hmm. pain tolerance is, like, non-existent. Yeah, she, and that's not a really painful area at all that she got. So I think getting these tattoos mm -hmm. on her arm has helped her pain tolerance. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the other day she had a cyst removed in mm -hmm. her lip. And when Stevie got in the car, she was like... Did Naya get her cyst removed? And I was like, yeah. She goes, is she in pain? And I said, yeah. She goes, I don't even want to go home. She said, Naya oh, makes it bad? everybody's problem. Oh, my really? God. Yes. But she did great with the good, cyst. Good. But I think getting the tattoos has helped her. But yeah, she's one of those. If she don't feel good. Yeah. Nobody's going to feel it's, good. I don't. It's hard for me to know that because like she's always in her room or yes. like, you know, kind of to herself. So I can't imagine her like putting y'all through it. Oh, yes. She's telling really everybody. Crying? Oh, my god yes nervous breakdowns oh i can't with imagine pain. so that's another thing we were talking about i was like usually i can kind of get myself excited enough because i love the results so yes. much that like that excitement gets me through mm -hmm. it a lot of times but nope. this was just like a nope fuck the excitement it's gone it hurts that bad it's gone that's bad it's so crystal when i say like i can't even put into words how bad it was that's fucking bad yeah because yeah. and look you have like a trillion yeah Yep. So Face. in my mind, I was like, I could, you know, handle palm, like, you know, not fun places, kneecap, shin. But um, and then I was thinking foot. You know how people say the feet are the worst? It hurt. I got it. Oh, you did. Yeah. It hurts hella bad. So people say the feet are the worst. And after feeling this, I was thinking, I don't ever want to do my feet. Oh, it hurt hella fucking yeah. bad. I'm not. I'm not even down. Mm -mm. <laughs> Those are just going to stay blank. There's just certain shit. I just, I'm just going to give up on a lot of shit. But anyway, I'm super happy with the results. Yeah, I um, love them. And I don't know. Maybe I'll be able to do like some of the in-between stuff that I wanted. Just it's not going to be like the upper sternum area like I thought. You don't but I'm so. going to like web it together once I, you know, <laughs> no. No? No. Fuck no. You're it not going to try? Mm-mm. No, I was like exhausted. I felt like I was beat up after. Oh, I, it's I'm still hella uncomfortable. Like yeah. it was rough. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Maybe if it's like some small ass shit or I don't even know about that. I now you got know. me hella scared because I know I want to do like here at some point. But but like I said, it's different for everybody. So it might not even hurt you. I know some tiny people, you know, that like completely filled in all the way everywhere 
head to toe. Like maybe, you know, it Does might your neck not... hurt? Mm, yeah. My throat. Because yeah. that's what I really want. But fuck. Throat? Yeah. Like here. It was tolerable though. Under here was worse than the Really? Mm-hmm, for sure. And I still need, I want to like connect all that still too and yeah. fill in those gaps. But yeah. like under here, like I think the fat. When you tattoo fat, it fucking hurts. It does. It hurts. And I think that might be why it was so bad. Hurt more than your face? Like My face bones? didn't hurt. My face never really? hurts. You never heard me tell you that? No. Tell anybody that? My face doesn't hurt at all. Like, I went to sleep when I got this. And when I got the... It doesn't... I don't wow. know if it's from, like... I don't know what it is. There must not be a lot of nerves or something, or I don't know. It does face don't hurt Isn't at that all. Crazy. Yeah. No, I'm sitting there like on the phone joking and shit every time I got my face tattooed. Wow. It does not hurt at all, and it promotes collagen. It makes you know, so it's also a beauty treatment. I was Tattoo telling Neil all that because Neil got a big chin strap recently, and it hurt him. But you know, they have hair and shit, so like it was hella bad and it was three and a half hours for him and so he was just like shaking and it was terrible and um i was like telling him how it doesn't hurt me at all to do the face but i was like you'll have a baby face for like a really long time because it promotes it stimulates collagen production so you know yeah that's a great benefit beauty treatment (laughs) yeah that's a great fucking benefit Mm -hmm. yeah tattoo my whole face shit yeah do it (laughs) for real I have a new obsession. Do you want to hear about that? Uh, great. Yeah. Um, when None I of get... mine are happy fucking notes. Huh? None of mine are happy notes. Oh. Well, I have this new obsession. I was on TikTok and I was, I don't know how I came about even searching for this the other day, but there was a, oh, I think I was following a page and they showed um, a parasite that they had passed. And it looked like a big Great. tapeworm or whatever. And so I started like watching the video, reading the comments, all this shit. Then I go and I search it on TikTok. And um, I was just searching like parasite detox, parasite cleanse. And there's this product on Amazon that I didn't know that went viral. Or yeah, it went viral on TikTok like two years ago. And it was like sold out for hella long because hella people got it. And... All of the review, well, not all the reviews, but people in the comments were like, go on Amazon and search this and go look at the reviews. Hella people were passing fucking worms. Hella people. I guess it's not um, a rare thing, especially for meat eaters to have parasites. Like that's just, we're gross aliens and that's something we have. But I told you the pork experiment I did before. Where worms came out? I put a pork chop in a ziploc bag did you pour soda on it ziplocked it nope i didn't do nothing i left it for two weeks two weeks where counter this is when i years ago i did this as and, an experiment yes and fucking maggot worms grew out well, of that's, it that's that's meat that's de- decomposition that's like there was no, no way for anything to get in it it came out the pork chop doesn't that I, so that I don't doesn't know. happen just from rotting meat, right? I I read, this is why I did it, I read that some animals don't fully digest their food that they eat. And, you know, pigs are known to eat gross A stuff. Lot, yeah. And so... I, I've seen some people, like, pour soda on pork, raw pork, and then they'll come out. No, not, I just left like it in a Ziploc. Like, not, no, two weeks later. Like, immediate worms will come out. White either white thin thread ones i've seen Ugh, or ones like creep me out. ones that are a little bit thicker but so i mean just as humans like we because of our diet and shit like that we do tend to have parasites it's not a big deal but if we get like tapeworms or if there's ones that are like um there's people the that names, purposely want tapeworms to lose weight yes I know, and order them from fucking africa yes. i've seen that but um there's some that will like rob us of our nutrients and make us crave hella sugar and make us crave like junk food and like all hours of the night and like all these weird um, symptoms if you have certain ones. And so in the reviews, these people are like posting the ones that um, now I remember what I saw this lady. She's a de- it's like detox by ginger or something. 
don't quote me. I got to get the actual name, but she's on, I follow her on Instagram Mm -hmm. and she's a, she did a video. She's on the toilet and she's like, there's a warning. And she's like, don't watch this. If you, you know, get grossed out by worms. Me. Um, of course I watch it (sighs) and she fucking, um, she's sitting on the toilet and on the back of the toilet, which is pretty disgusting. There's these long, thin, those ones gross me out ribbon looking worms. And she was like, I just passed these. I did, you know, a pretty, pretty, you know, serious detox. Um, since I've been breastfeeding and since I had my most recent baby, I haven't detoxed in a while. So this is my first one in a while. Um, And then she's like, you know, DM me and if you're interested and I will send you because she sells like detox programs, like tells you what type of herbs or, you know, foods or whatever are good for for detoxing. And so that's what made me start searching on TikTok and find all the other shit. But um, I found that people in other countries like Mexico and like a bunch of other countries, it's normal for them to fucking deworm like every six months. And sometimes they even deworm their kids like every six months. This girl was like, my grandma would deworm us as kids like all the time, like once a year. And it's very normal in other cultures. Now, I don't know if that's because of, you know, where they live and the environment or what the food is like in other countries or whatever. Uh, But like as an American, I never fucking heard of that. And so I'm just like digging and found all this shit there's this lady she's called the worm queen or something on tiktok and she did the amazon (laughs) product one and then ended up like merging with another company and then they came out with a formula for an all natural one also are you gonna do it i was thinking i will um just to try it you know yeah What's it going to hurt? What's it going to hurt? It's all natural stuff. and Either like, you have them or you don't. Yeah, right? I hope you and don't. And then maybe, I don't know. If you, I don't really have sugar cravings or anything, but I do have headaches, fatigue. Um, I do eat at night. I get really hungry at night. Me too. And you know what's gross is they were saying they get hungry at night. When there's a full moon, they get hungry. Bitch. All this weird. <laughs> it was grossing me out, but it was also super interesting. Um, I saw pictures of hella people that passed egg sacs and yeah, like it was just on. like um it's crazy and then i even i can't even further. watch bot fly removals you know when people will get a bot yeah and they- or in their lip or something i've seen a video oh yeah. those fucking make mm-hmm. me nauseated so i saw one and they were even doing you know that bentonite clay that aztec yeah. clay okay so if you mix that um i forget how much like half a cup or something that apple cider vinegar and baking soda in a bath or even in the sink. I watched a video of a lady do it in the sink um, and you soak in it. Parasites will come out of your skin. And she like put the flash on and showed in the water. And people were like, is that just from what did she soak in the sink? Uh, her arm, her feet, her feet. And they came out of her feet. And so and then there were some people that were like, yeah, look, and they had little dots of like it looked like like a old blister almost. It was so tiny, but it looked like their skin, you know, like their skin had opened up and something came out. We're disgusting aliens. You know, we have fucking mites that live on our eyelashes and shit. Yes, that's another thing. Um, Microscopic mites. When you do these detoxes, they can come out of your nose. They can come out of your eyes. I'm calling 911 if they're Everybody coming out said that. Of my so many shit. people were in the comments saying that. Imagine there was one this girl. comes out of your fucking urethra. Yeah, you can pee them out. You can pee them out. They can come out of your ear. Basically, any orifice, anything, any opening. I want but mine to also, stay inside. Also, your feet. So many people said that. They were like, I'll just take them to the grave because I'm real. not down to do that. If I seen it come out of my hooky. This lady, okay, the one that ended up being the worm queen or whatever, when she did it, she peed them out. (gasps) And she said that when she looked in the toilet. It's hanging out of your puss like spaghetti, bitch. That's what I was thinking. Do you have to pull it? Oh, God. And you feel it. But it was little ones, I guess, because she said when she looked in the toilet, it was moving around like Sprite. Like little ones, I think. It was freaking me the fuck out. But they were like, we don't want you to freak out. So this is what happens. But there was like this young girl and she was saying one came out of her eye. 
um, and it felt like an old contact lens or something. So she flushed her eyes and then she saw it. She just, it was clear. It was very tiny. She pulled it out, whatever. But um, another girl, this, this other young girl, she was saying that she had ate pumpkin seeds and um, people were like, well, I eat them all the time. And she was like, but do you eat them for like a week straight? She was like, I basically ate like a quarter cup just as a snack for a week by day six. She said she had them coming out of her nose. She was blowing her nose and she could see like little things. Just from eating pumpkin seeds. I've done it was, that. It was coming. Me and Bunny will it was knife out. some pumpkin seeds. If you do it, if you did, look at this. If you, Hello. <laughs> Oh my God! Mark just pulled up a big screen on our huge of screen eye worms. to give us nightmares. And you Parasite. guys, Parasite don't ever, detox. Another results. reason for me Let's to want to end it every day. Yeah, and I was just like, you know, we're fucking aliens. Like for real. The more I learn about the human body, the more I don't want anybody to touch me. The more I don't want keep anybody your fucking tongue on eye me. worms. To yourself. I'm like, do you have tonsil stones? Are you going to let me look in there with a flashlight before you offer to eat me out? Do you bl- brush your tongue? Do you have a white tongue? All these, the more I learn about the human body, the more I don't want, look at this, parasite. I just cleansing. want you to stay off the internet and, and don't tell me about nothing else. But now I'm like, I want them out. Because what if they're in me? What if they're causing yeast infections? What if they're causing UTIs? One guy was like, my wife and I, did the dropper fulls of this one on Am- on um, Amazon that went viral on TikTok. He's like, my wife used to struggle with fucking UTIs all the time. She hasn't had one since. What if I have a worm in there? <laughs> what if what if worms are disrupting my chemistry and and causing havoc? What if? So this is a real thing. This isn't you like do it. And if you got worms that come medicine. out, then I'll do it. All right. But if you're clear, I'm not and doing it. And the dropper, it. it's cheap. It's like, I think it's like 17 bucks or 20 bucks or something. And you do it for 10 days. I think it's a 10 day cleanse. And it's, some people said they did it twice. They, they did a rest in between and they did it twice. Some people were like, by day 10, I had fucking. But then how often do you have to do it? To once, make sure you stay know. worm free. <laughs> Most people were saying once a year. Um, I think some people were like they do it every couple months. The thing is, I think it's normal to have a certain amount of, I don't know, healthy parasites. The safe ones. It's yeah. the ones that are causing problems. What if your sinus issues, some cause sinus issues. They got to live there. What if... <laughs> You have some that gotta go. What if my vaginal issues and your sinus issues are caused by my existence in this world friends. is already shaky on a good day? <laughs> what if they're caused by friends, uninvited friends? They gotta live there. And I'm not a big meat eater. You're not either. No. But like, apparently, that don't matter. Like, you know, even a occasional meat eater is susceptible <sighs> to it. And also it, your environment and like sometimes our water. Some people were saying like our water can give it to you. Some it's just it's really gross shit. It's really gross, and I'm tired of being human. Oh I'm tired God. of being here. Our water that we have to pay for yeah. that is that exists Nestle freely. Just takes and sells back to us, and yeah. you bottle it from our reservoir. Yeah, yeah. A lot of companies do. Hey, that video. You know, I already feel rage when I think about the fact we live somewhere that has fucking water existing and we pay for it. Yeah. But then to hear about companies that just go bottle that had to be told you can't take water from California right now. We're in a drought, and they're like, I already took. 500 million gallons i'm taking more and i'm gonna sell it for fucking and I'm gonna three dollars a bottle else, don't water your fucking grass yeah mm-hmm. you it's don't disgusting. take showers every day because we need this water to sell to sell yeah yeah fucking it's really greedy. fucked up i hate it i hate being here greedy dude and then i'll just go on my tangent quickly to learn about the girl scouts that really pissed me off mm-hmm. because we have a listener and friend that has daughters in the Girl Scouts and told me they specifically asked about their chapter and what their position was on it before they even started cookie season or whatever. And they were told that, you know, they're neutral. They're not or whatever. They're not speaking up for either side or whatever. It's basically up to each individual chapter, I think. with Or troop, yeah. Yeah. With what they want to do or something. I don't know. But I think... 
that kind of implied, okay, so if this particular chapter supports Israel or whatever, that's on them and vice versa, right? But to be told, like... The little girls in one of the troops wanted to make bracelets to raise money for the children in Gaza. Yeah. And they were told they couldn't do it. And then the troop leader was like, but what about the troops that did it for Ukraine? Mm -hmm. Then they tried to say, oh, you guys didn't go about it the right way through the the proper fucking channels. chapter and channels. And they're like, yeah, fucking right. Yes, we did. I was a Girl Scout from the time I was six mm -hmm. till 13. Which is so weird to me because we didn't have that where I'm from. That wasn't even a thing. That was that was like something we saw on TV. It was a that wasn't small like small town around. Girl yeah, Scout it, troop. It really was, and you were only what like a few miles away. Yeah, so weird, like night and day, isn't it? Yeah, because that was just something we heard about and saw on TV. And I love I loved like selling cookies and calendars and going to camp and you know doing all that stuff. And when I heard about it, I was just like. Wow. And then lo and behold, we find out that Girl Scouts is actually listen to this. in bed with the same company that is like making weapons to send to fucking fire at children. So the yep, the Girl Scouts have a oh, longtime partnership with Raytheon, which is um a missile manufacturer. So the partnership the Girl Scouts have with it is supposedly um, a STEM technology learning partnership because they are a technology company. But what they also do is they make bombs. They make um, the bunker buster bombs that they're using in Gaza, they make those. They make drones. They make missiles. They're like, this is a conflict of interest. You can't be raising money for for, for the people for we're the people killing. that our company, our sister company, is is bombing. So I think that was probably even. Not, I'm not going to say more disturbing, but just as disturbing to me is the fact that this girl empowerment organization for children is partnered with, the with a bomb making company that's a bombing children yes yeah it's a Wh slap it's a big slap in the face what the fuck is that about yeah it's fucked up it's kind of like expected at this point though because they're all tied in they're all connected i'd hate to some people hate to hear it but they own everything they own us. So, like, you know, um, if you're still in denial about that, Google is free. Just, like, for sure. It, you know, it's it's facts. On Patreon, I posted the list of, because a bunch of people kept asking, mm -hmm. um, the resource list. You know, oh, yeah, good. From Haya. So, yeah. it's on Patreon if you're a patron. Good. Thank you for posting that. Yeah, of course. Um. Oh, the other thing was the Girl Scout troop was a Palestinian-led Girl Scout troop. So the troop leader was Palestinian. How fucked up. Imagine being told that. Fuck your yeah. people. Yeah, so they're on the list. I heard Hello Kitty was added to the list, too. What? Well, Sanrio. I heard Sanrio was added to the list. I heard that, like, yesterday. So, like, there's a lot of goth girlies and a lot of girls that are freaking out about um, having to do away with Hello Kitty. Damn. Mm-hmm. I haven't looked into it, but, um, yeah, another, uh, a listener also had mentioned Sanrio was added to the list. So they didn't, they opted out of getting a Hello Kitty birthday cake Damn. because of it. Yeah. Yeah. Il Maquillage, that foundation that yeah. we liked, that mm -hmm. company, um, they're on the boycott list as yeah. well. That's all right. We'll get some Figure it out. Up. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Um, speaking of makeup, Nick's. Bunny came home the other day. I think she stole it, so luckily. But she came <laughs> home with the fucking, the new released Duck Plump gloss, oil, lip oil, okay? It has like an orange tinted clear casing, uh, Cardi B, it's her campaign or whatever. She comes home with it. It's a lip plumper, plumper one. Now, I use the lip oil that they already have that's the same but it's not the duck plump one and it's great it's great like lip gloss it's really thick it looks nice it stays on really good 
So I was like, oh, let me try it. She comes in with it. When I tell you it feels like I put jalapenos on the I stove want it. and then rubbed them as hard as I can on my mouth and then just sat there. Did it work? Did it plump them? No. Oh, then fuck it. It was fire. And my tongue was on fire. Ew. I got a little, I like licked my, like the beginning of the opening of my mouth <gasps> and my whole fucking mouth was on fire. I was like, did they even <sighs> test this shit? This is the worst fucking product I've ever had. It would be fine if it actually plumped them, but if it's not doing that, Bunny fuck y'all. Bunny said it did for her, it did not for me. And I left that shit on for a good like 20 minutes to see what the result was. Yeah. It didn't plump shit. It, my shit was just on fire, pain, fire the whole time. Even when you wiped so, it off, it was still burning? Yes. And oh. I was like i better not kiss peas or oh, like anything because that shit is fire even on my tongue so um i was complaining about it on like twitter and hella people were laughing and were like yeah there's like a bunch of people that like marched in with red lips demanding a refund shut up that shit like and i heard they use actual chili in it like chili pepper oil probably probably capsaicin peppers too like how about you fucking warn people that this hurts or i right. don't know it's from hell so um i used a sinus spray before and it and it was supposed to like help open your sinuses by lighting you on fire it so was wasabi it had, spray it had capsaicin pepper in it i don't know if i'm saying it right fuck you if i'm not don't correct me okay <laughs> You know, I have my own fucking dialect, but it had it in there. And when I say I was fucking damn near in tears, I was so you just furious. You shot fire into your sinuses. Because it didn't help open my sinuses. It just literally, they were on fire. It inflamed everything worse. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. It was so bad. Hard pass. Hard yeah, fucking pass. Warn people, there's actual fucking pepper in this that's going to light your shit up. Fuck like, that. Um, I don't want plump lips that bad to go through pain for it. I just don't. If it I hurt- expect a little tingle. You know what I'm saying? That most lip plumpers have. Right. But this is next level she might have it with her you can try it okay and if it's, it's not even plumping it's awful that's fucking that's Mm-mm. bullshit if it's not even fucking pumping yeah um i've been using i remember i was telling you i started i've been very diligent about doing my skincare every night like mm. trying to stay on top of it for mm-hmm. the first time i have a routine um and you know the tretinoin i've been using tretinoin my doctor prescribed it and um she said when you start out you know use it like three times a week or whatever Mm -hmm. and so you know i've used it previously so i've been using it this week and i had to skip last night because you know one of the side effects is it makes your skin really sensitive like Mm -hmm. you have to wear sunscreen oh yeah um it already feels like uh the next day like you slight have a slight like sunburn Mm -hmm. um but i will say it's working i do see a difference good um but it does. It like makes your skin. I mean, it's like is it like a sensitive. very strong like exfoliant? Like it's it's resurfacing your face, right? It's yeah. It's supposed to work with like for age spots and fine lines and and but shit like, like that. Replacing the skin, I think, is what it's right. Right? I, I, Isn't it somehow like? I believe it's a burning retinol your, cream. Like burning your face off. Yes. Gradually, gently burning your face off is yes. what I think it does. Yep. Yeah, so that makes sense. You're going to be a little sensitive. Yes. and it, you, So don't overdo it. Right. You just <laughs> you just need a super thin fucking layer. Yeah. You don't have to like put it on hella thick like moisturizer. Yeah, yeah. That's, Do not. Be careful. But I, I say it, it does work. And it it is. It's a, a retinol... Um, product yes that's what it is um so wendy williams was diagnosed did you hear dementia she has dementia and she has i knew it um she's dementia young and aphasia oh aphasia is where it affects your speech it's what uh bruce willis has louis body dementia it's it's the same i read it's the whatever he has it's um, he has louis body which is bad um yeah so She's been officially diagnosed. She's she, young. I mean, kind of. How old is she? I think she's like in her 60s. Fuck, that's so young to me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that is young. I mean, I don't know how old you are when you get that. Isn't he also in, or he's probably in like his 70s, huh? I, I think he was diagnosed in his late 60s. Yeah. Or 60s. You know, 60s just seems, my dad died 
you know, dad died at 64, so it just seems so fucking young to yeah. me. God damn, she's, she's 59. 59. She is young for it. <gasps> she is. Louis, god damn. So. Listen, after caring for somebody with Alzheimer dementia. <laughs> I'm sorry, our assistant here is, is fucking, fucking <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Bruce Williams. Yep. That's who we're looking for, Mark. Bruce Willis <laughs> is 68. Yeah, and he's had it for some years. They are. They're fucking... Yeah, he seems pretty advanced because he can't even talk anymore. And that's what aphasia does. It fucking mm-hmm. robs your ability to speak. So not to make a joke of this, but a light, we go. a light part of it. She was doing an interview the other day with Black China. Mm-hmm. And she's talking about, I believe, her first husband, who, whose name she kept, I think. And she mentioned he didn't have no money. And some women reposted it and was like, damn, like, even through dementia, she remembered that motherfucker was broke. Like, <laughs> there's some things you'll never forget. Exactly. I was hella laughing. Like, imagine how he would feel watching that. Like, you don't even have your full mind, but you know, I was you're broke, a bitch. broke motherfucker. You ruined my life for a couple years. <laughs> yes and she said it with a very serious look on her face like he didn't have no money like damn (laughs) damn yeah so Uh, you know when it was suspected that she had something going on like that i saw people in the comments saying a lot of it's your karma for being a lot of people are saying it's her karma and like you got to be careful what you put out there and blah 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 i mean even if that's the case like it's it's in poor taste to like make that point you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. You don't really have to say that. I, right. Because it's also ugly to do that. It is. You know? So it's kind of like, eh, you're doing the same thing. So yeah. Just <laughs> you know? be like, damn. Yeah. I mean, she was a fucking gossip reporter, columnist, whatever. Yeah, like, her, her whole whole job was to been, be nosy. Yeah, and to be messy. And, you know, that was her career. Joan Rivers was this, you know what I mean? The same way. Gossipy and messy and also evil, evil which we later found out. But, you know, uh, to point that out and say that's why she's having this de- debilitating mean. fucking condition take over is yeah. very fucking poor taste, I feel like. Have some couth. <laughs> Have some couth and you don't need to do that home training yeah yeah dude Uh, fucking tiffany haddish she was already on the shit cancel list like are we surprised knowing the way that israel welcomes pedophiles are we surprised and they they pay for they pay for the we're so great to her like they pay for celebrities to come there and say great things. Of like, course. Of course. Multiple celebrities have yeah. came out and talked about it. But I just think she probably should have had somebody advise her, like, with all of their history of hiding pedophiles and shit, and you in the hot seat for the pedophilia Ari Spears shit, video. maybe you shouldn't go. <laughs> like, you know maybe what I mean? Maybe you should not go The joke and is shut telling up. itself. Maybe you shouldn't fucking go. But yeah, fuck her. And, and then to be like, the- I'm going there to find out the truth because you can't believe everything you see I need on, to see it with my own eyes. Is what, what are you said. gonna see, bitch? Yeah, Mia Khalifa, allegedly, who I'm very fond of, um, made a tweet. I do like that her. Said, "I'm going to North Korea. I need to see it with my own eyes." And I just thought that was so funny for her to put that. You know what I mean? Like she didn't have to go into it. We all knew what she meant, and that was like exactly, bitch. You fucking dumbass, bitch. Oh, it's it was. I was like, are you fucking serious? Like, yeah. Imagine thinking you're going to Israel to get the truth. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. As an adult, like celebrities are just paid puppets to me and like nothing to look up to no and they all have their fucking price so don't expect any integrity just knowing hollywood is such a disgusting pedophilia ridden fucking gross place anyway just knowing things that we know like um i'm not gonna look to a celebrity to do the right thing anymore no like i'm shocked when i see the ones that are doing the right thing because i don't expect it from them same just like j-lo and her visits there and to even post it on her story one day and put going to the motherland bitch you're puerto rican and you're from new york and what the fuck are you talking about the mother how how is that your motherland and to call it that and just like 
ugh. Like, you're disgusting. You're disgusting, and that movie that you released is a fucking joke. I didn't even watch it, but it's a goddamn joke. What? She has a new one? What is it, a, a it's rom-com? A, it's a movie that I guess she funded, which it, it makes sense, because I watched a review of it earlier, and it's so fucking ridiculous. It's like her living in this glass house, but there's like these roommates on different levels of the house, and there's like a lot of dancing, a lot of choreography all through the movie. She works in a factory. Is it a musical? I don't know, maybe, but there's a lot of dancing. It's very cringe. They're in a factory at one point and they're all working to like work for a heart, like a big heart, like f- for love. I don't know. And and she's like dancing. They're all dancing this choreography in the factory. And it's like, it's so cringy. And I'm like, of course she fucking funded this shit herself. And um, I'm just, I'm not going to watch it. It's what is like, this? go, uh, go somewhere. New age. Uh, let it die. Like, is that dance? what we fucking <laughs> talked about last episode? Let it die. Let it fucking um, die. Yeah. 20 million self-financed multimedia project that examines Jennifer Lopez life as a serial romantic. At one point she goes to like, it looks like an AA meeting, but it's like for romantics. And she like stands up in is front it of like everybody. Is it like documentary style? No, it's a movie. Oh, God. It's a cringy ass fucking movie i think it came out on prime or something it's embarrassing as fuck uh, and ben affleck's in it i don't know <laughs> i'm I, not gonna I be shocked him. i didn't yeah it's on prime she put it out on prime um god yeah no good reviews on that you should have kept your 20 million and shut your fucking mouth about the motherland mm-hmm. god damn yeah every day yeah so so don't watch celebrities are not <laughs> they're uh, not um, where it's at role models ever. no never no. and make sure your kids know that yeah they're ugh. <clears throat> I, I don't have anything kind to fucking say speaking of make sure your kids know um every now and then my lessons like backfire i don't know I don't, I don't know if this is a backfire but the other morning we were walking to the car and um we were like getting ready to take bunny to school or something and i'm walking with peas and she's like hella loud of course saying hi to neighbors and shit and there was a car but they were like pulled over and so she's like yelling there's a car coming like you need to stop or you're gonna be so dead and so the neighbors like giggling to themselves and I'm like, oh, my God, like, can you not word it like that? I didn't teach it to you that like that. But she's like, you will be so dead. I if love that. If you don't stop, there's a car. You will be so dead. Good girl. Mm-hmm. You remember that when uh, right before we were recording, she was sitting in this chair and she wouldn't get up. And Maria kept telling her, get up, get up and fucking <laughs> she was like, no, I sit here. Nope. Nope. I don't. Santana, don't get up. Then she's she's trying to get up and she goes. A drunk like drunk. where did that come from that shit yeah was like so where, funny. you ain't never even been around a drunk get out of here like from us joking you know that's where that came from um we have some interesting write-ins oh man yeah i'm i'm excited to read one of them for sure let's do it all right so hello love you both prefer if you'd keep this anonymous i commented on potafria's live in the last few weeks that I needed to write in. Mm. Long story long, I have a relative who I've always known slash observed has had a problem with lying. Not little white lies. I'm talking about ridiculous lies. Anyway, I'm not, quote, new to the show, but have been listening for about two years. After listening to the show, I reached out to other family members to have them listen to certain episodes. I realize the error in my ways and I will have them subscribe. This is because the certain relative has shared several stories Potafria has mentioned as her own. I mean, everything from sex work, dom work, etc. I know those sound generic, but they have told me the story about the condom on the remote controls in a hotel room, piss work in an office building, work with a pro golfer and their preference, subs cleaning house in lingerie, Mm -hmm. tissue in the ass, stripping and all. There's more, but I understand the show time constraints. Mm -hmm. LOL. They didn't listen. They didn't know I listen, obviously. 
It's sad and scary at the same time. Very. We're not in contact anymore due to lies, of course, but it opened my eyes to how crazy, insert better word, some people may act. I really love this relative. They would drive cross country to pick me up if needed, but they have been a liar for years. They truly take on the likes slash personality of anyone they are hanging with at the moment. We always knew the stories were lies, but listening to the podcast brings a twist. Not an unexpected twist, just a twist. Some are hard to listen to for this reason. Also know they follow you, so they are probably stealing more for unknowing friends slash relatives. LOL. In any case, keep doing what you're doing. It's such a relief to my week. P.S. If you have any additional questions, let me know. Now... I do. Have oh, a- <laughs> my God. Like, Where to even start? I do have additional questions. So I will reach out mostly because I want to know if this is someone I interact with. That way I know to limit things I share or yeah. just how comfortable I am with that person, because this is a really fucking bizarre thing to do. And again, it's kind of violating. It's very violating. And I wish I could say this is the first time I've ever experienced it. And but we, it's not. And we always say it's so much cooler when you're your authentic self. No matter what that may be. Even if you feel it's boring. Even if you're a recluse that never leaves the fucking house and fucking draws pictures or fucking does nothing but watch TV or fucking, you know what I mean? Like still, I know people like that that have an awesome sense of humor and are some of the coolest people I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to be, um, I don't know. I don't know how to word it. An extreme character or like have a yeah you don't have, have to a edgy or you be know a wild a wild personality a or occupation yeah. or, you know what i mean you don't have to be i don't know like i just know some of my favorite people are toned down regular i don't know for better word fucking, they're just authentic they're themselves and that what what makes them cool i don't know i'm not going to teach you how to be yourself and i'm not going to teach you how to be cool and i think you're a fucking weirdo for doing this and again i've experienced this before i've experienced it many times um with people that claimed they were like some of my best friends i found out at one point were telling stories that were my life or my my situation or my scenario and so I'm not shocked I am shocked that there was such a list of stories that were being told as theirs well, maybe so long and that it's a listener like somebody wasn't gonna find out yeah you know yeah and like do you did you not know your family also listened to the show or started listening did you maybe like want to shut your mouth at that point and stop telling my life stories that did are personal asked, to me like i'm sorry did did the write-in ask for advice on how to talk to them no they're not talking to them anymore oh, because of lies damn so um Yeah, because so also I've had experiences with pathological liars before. Habitual. It is an illness. Um, It is a condition. Because they really start to believe their own lies. They start to believe their own lies. They, um, it becomes so first nature to them. It becomes so natural to them. Like I know people that have been this way their whole fucking life. And it's really bizarre. And it's really weird and disrespectful because it's like it's like you're lying to me about who you are like I um you know I had a childhood friend that just even to this day like has her kids thinking that they are races that they're not ethnicities that they're not um from neighborhoods that they're not just like all of this shit and it's like you can't um you can't live your life like that. I always thought it was something she would grow out of, but right. it's continued. Like me and her started being friends at a super young age. We were like six when we met and it's just continued all into adulthood. And it's so fucking bizarre and weird and just disrespectful. And it's like, it's even more weird when you have, when you watch them do it with other people. And then it's like, 
I was around at that time and you're not even embarrassed like right. telling these stories in front of me. Right. I've been around our whole lives and you're telling people these stories, but you believe it. So like, I don't know if this person is that far gone, but you know, I have had experiences with people that are like lifelong liars. It's just weird. I don't know if it's an insecurity thing. I don't know if it's just from habit. I don't I, know. I think it does go to insecurity. I think it goes to, Definitely to insecurity. I think that's probably how it starts. But like at some point, like what is the point? You know, I know some people that aren't like trying to make new friends and are married and happily married and are still doing it. So it's like you're not trying to seek out new friends. You're not trying to seek out a partner. What's the fucking reason? I don't don't know. know. But I just for... Every, every lie always comes out like it's always found out so lying is very fucking unnecessary it's it, unnecessary it's gonna it's cause you to lose relationships yeah. yeah absolutely yeah you'll lose relationships and like over this is it. someone that loves you like this is a cousin that loves you and thinks you're great and yeah. has separated themselves from you because you're a known liar and like, yeah, it's just um, some self separated myself is from people too because it's just like um, exhausting. Yeah, it's exhausting, and it's like, how can I feel like I trust you if you're lying about the dumbest shit? And do you think I'm stupid? <clears throat> right. That's another thing liars need to realize that like people that have been around liars, like you're not as convincing as you think you are, and like I think they have that fucked up. Because, like, the people, the liars that I know, like, they really think they'd be having people fooled. And they don't. And I've had people even make jokes, like, behind their back and say things to me that haven't known them as long. Nowhere near as long. Like, maybe a year or two. And they'll even pull me aside and be like, you know, like, what's up with them? And, like, make comments. So, like, you're not, the liars that I know, like, you're not even convincing. Right. Um, and they think they are. And it's it's fucking it's the weirdest shit. It really is. It, people like that need to be studied. So if you're doing that, anybody listening, if if you're lying, knock it the fuck off. Stop. Because yeah. people just know that people know you think you're a great liar. You're not. People yeah. know they just don't either have the energy or give a fuck enough to call you out on it. Right. You're going to lose relationships, whether it be friendship or romantic and people are going to talk people about you as a you liar different like differently like um even people that tell a lot of little white lies and shit like i take that disrespectfully you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying even people that lie with good intentions yes. to avoid conflict to uh try to just keep the peace or try to fucking i don't know i take it as disrespect because you think i'm dumb Right. Okay. So like it needs to stop. Like you think I'm dumb or um, I don't. Yeah, it, it's very fucking angering. Very angering. Even if it has nothing to do with me. Even if I just witness you lying to people. Like I had a situation about a week ago and it's like I watch you lie to people around you for nothing, for no reason. Why then would I believe anything you fucking say ever? So now don't get frustrated when I'm second guessing things, when I'm not trusting you with information, when I'm not when I'm holding you differently. Now, don't be offended because I watch you fucking lie for no reason to everyone in your circle, even if it's not malicious. I'm not I don't fuck with it. I don't I don't and I don't respect it. So it's like you need to stop. (laughs) You're not like people know what you're doing. and You need to fucking stop. Stop being a liar. I hate it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, this says about boogers. (laughs) Hey, ladies. And it's written by William. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, ladies. I was listening to your rants about boogers on this week's episode, and it made me think of two things. First, when my now teens were little kids, I always told them that boogers are like apples. If you pick them, you eat them. This Wait a minute. This pretty hold much it, stopped them from picking their nose. That She wanted them to stop picking their nose. That could backfire. Very much. Yeah. That's that a was dangerous, a risk. That's a dangerous game to play. That was kids. a risk. 
This pretty much stopped them from picking their noses. I did have to threaten them a few times to actually eat the booger dangling from their fingers, and the tears were enough to cut it short. I'm going to throw up. Second... Um, I'm often stuck in traffic and see so many people picking their noses. It's usually white dudes, 50 plus. I try to catch their eye and then lift a tissue box and present it like I'm on the prices right. I saw a dude this morning and he was going like this out of his car window. It was and a I knew for a fact and he kept doing it. So why else would you be doing this? It's sticky. What else could it be? It's yeah, it's a booger. Ram his car. I should have. I fucking should have. She said, um... I try to catch their eye and then lift a tissue box and present it like I'm on the prices, mm-hmm. right? They get so embarrassed. Love you both and free Palestine. Good. That's a good lesson to fucking, I told you, I'll honk. I was behind this guy, but I'm looking at him at his eyes in his rear view, like trying to make out, is he digging in his nose? But I just kept seeing his hand come out and go like this. And you I motherfucker. Was just like, you nasty bitch. Uh, I knew that was, was so going stuck. On. I've, uh, this- it was just like multiple. Like, stop. They're going on the next person's car. Mm -mm. Oh, my God. Mm -mm. Um, Okay. Hello, ladies. Let me start this off with saying I've been a big fan of you both for a few years now. And if it weren't for this podcast, I'd never have the strength to write in to some strangers on the Internet for advice on something I'm this self-conscious of. I made a long list in my head of all the things I could think of that are wrong with me. Don't say that. But for some self-preservation, I'll try to be brief. I've been feeling very anxious and lonely recently. For context, I'm 20, but I've never kissed, had sex, or even held hands romantically with somebody else. I feel I may be on the asexuality spectrum because I have no desire to go out and look for sex. But I'm more embarrassed because it's not normal for my age. When I was younger and a guy expressed that he liked me, I'd instantly feel like he was joking and distance myself from him. I guess the problem is that I do crave the companionship that a partner would bring, but most guys aren't interested in me, and if they say they are, I assume I'm the butt of a joke. I know that I'm still young, but pop culture has made me feel like I'm bound to be a spinster for the rest of my days because I haven't found the love of my life yet. I'm not the best at meeting new people because I'm very shy and barely leave my house. But I feel that I'm at the prime of my life and I'm wasting it because I can't put out and be more outgoing. Over the years, I've seen my friends have romantic relationships with little effort needed and I'm wondering when my time will come. I feel like I need a guide on how to properly be a 20-something year old without acting emotionally stunted. Any advice on how to find a quality partner and make genuine friends would be greatly appreciated. Yes, I can't wait to dive into this. Number one, do not feel like you're not not, prime and do not feel like you're not normal. First of all, what is normal? normal? What the fuck is normal? Right. Do not feel like you're obligated to have sexual experiences by any fucking age. Like you're not comfortable. You're not comfortable. There's people that don't. um, I mean, there's people that are way older than you that are asexual and have been their whole lives and they're fine with it. I know someone who didn't have sex for their first time until they were in their 40s. It's normal is such bullshit. Throw that out Um, your vocabulary. Don't even don't be down on yourself at all about that. Um, When you feel comfortable to have experiences, that's when you do it. Not when society expects you to or anybody else um and if you never want to have those kind of experiences that's normal too like being asexual is a thing like absolutely um, as far as making friends and finding a partner or anything like that i'm not someone that ever really meets people in person all of my partners in the last over like maybe two decades has been through social media i was just gonna say the internet yeah social media it's all been through social media and it's like um i think it's great because you can get an idea of what their personality is like um their views on serious things whatever the type of shit that interests them twitter is really good because it's like you talk a lot like you're constantly writing thoughts it's not photos really yeah so it's a good way to kind of gauge what a person is into similarities you may have what their humor is you could clock all that shit pretty pretty much right away but um 
or like dating sites are great. Farmers only. Dating sites. That's where it's Christian at. Mink, no, for real. Um, dating sites, and I guarantee has, some have an asexual category. If you can, you know, do more research or whatever, and if you feel like that's the type of relationship you're looking for with someone, so there's no sexual um, expectations, do that. I would 100% do that. You can. That way, sex is not even on the table if you don't want to try anything like that. You can definitely put in your profile looking for companionship, mm-hmm. um, that you're shy. Um, Non-sexual companionship. Y- like, you can be very specific. That's that's the good thing about, yes. about it, too, is you can put that out there in your bio anywhere from jump. So then when you are approached or whatever, you know, that's already established. And then you can make friends, regular friends. It's just, I would definitely get on social media if and, you're not already. Yes, and I know younger generations aren't that big into Facebook, but Facebook would be a great resource um, for making friends because they have groups, right? Mm-hmm. If you really like cats, let's say you're into jellyfish. Let's say you're into baking at 2 a.m. There are so many different groups for things that you like, yeah. that you do. Yeah, join find those more groups. like-minded people. Yes, the internet is a great fucking resource. Great. It is. I'm terrified of the thought. Like, I've even met some people through other people, you know, like friends of friends and like got to know people that way. But I'm even hesitant on that just because of the disappointments that I've had and like finding out after I've already kind of invested time that like, oh, we are not on the same page. Like I'm wasting my time with this or, pers- you know, even yep. having that thought, I don't want to lead anybody on shit like that. So really the internet is my, my choice for, for like meeting potential partners or just, you know, new friends in general. I agree. Yeah. I'm not like a person that goes out and is comfortable talking with strangers ever. Like even when I go to bars and shit, when people say hi and stuff, I'm so short. Like I don't even open up at all for like any type of where are you from conversation or like the only time I will is if you're a friend of a friend that I'm with or something. And then I kind of feel like it's just polite to have some level of small talk. But just like a cold fucking, you know, introduction, like a fucking we've you don't know anybody I know, you're not getting conversation out of me in person. And then I'm next to her like, my mom's a nurse and I have a podcast. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm not like that. I will not fucking meet people that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's what whatever you're comfortable with, but I definitely agree. Social media, internet. You wanna do these two birthdays? Um, I have one up already. Okay go to hell um first i wanted to start off by saying i've been listening to your podcast for over three years now and i love and appreciate all the advice and how real you two are please don't stop what you're doing what you two are doing with this podcast and it's forever free palestine thank you the reason for my writing is because i would like to give a birthday shout out to my best friend kaylin her birthday is march 1st i put her onto the show and she's addicted now too i really hope She hears this. I just wanted to say, I know you're going through a lot right now, but trust me, things will get better. And it's important to give yourself grace. The universe put you in my life close to two years ago now, and I'm beyond grateful for you. Thank you for being a good friend to me. I appreciate you more than you think. I hope you have an amazing birthday. You are deserving of all good things. Don't forget that. I love you, Kaylin, uh, from Denise. Happy birthday, Kaylin. Yeah, happy birthday. That was very sweet. Very. All right. I'm hoping I can get this to you in time for you to give a big, huge birthday shout out to my daughter. I'm going to say Jenna, G-E-N-N-A, who will be turning 31 on February 26th. She showed me your podcast when we were on our mother-daughter road trip, and I've been in love since, and a fan, Patreon member, and got HD shirts to match. Thank you. She is an amazing young woman who is strong, independent, and confident, raising two girls, but yet she fights through it every single day, raising two girls on her own, sorry. She makes me very proud. I must have done something right. Happy birthday, my girl. Oh, happy birthday. Very sweet. That's very sweet. I and love I love that. that you guys listen together. Yes. Mom and daughter. You want to do this cute. last one? Yeah. Last birthday. Hey, guys. My name is Leslie. I wanted to ask if you guys can please shout out my bestie, 
uh, Chrissia Kitty for her birthday, March 3rd. Kitty is the one who put me on your guys' podcast when I was going through the darkest moments in my life. Mm. And I thank her so much for that because listening to you all saved my life. Oh, wow. Kitty is my bestie since sixth grade. We party together all the time, and now we're <laughs> growing old together. She's my other half, avocado half, since we do have matching tattoos. How cute. And I don't know what I would do without her. She's the only person I can be completely myself with and who knows everything about me and doesn't judge. She's my Chris. She's my crystal to my pot of Fria. Mm. She also just became a mother in January, and I'm super excited to have this new journey by her side, especially since I'll be her daughter's godmother. Aww. I love them both so much. Anyways, happy birthday, bitch. <laughs> Thank you for always being there for me. I love you so much for that and so much more. Have a great fucking day. And thank you, girl, for shouting out my bestie of a special day. Happy birthday, Kitty. Happy birthday. And congrats so on becoming a mama. Yes. That's exciting. Cool. Very exciting. You know what else is exciting? What? Naps. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. We're done well, dancing. I think that's it. Um, thank you for watching, listening, subscribing, all the good stuff, joining Patreon. For hanging with us. Yeah. Send us some write-ins. Leave us a comment on YouTube. Yes. Um, leave us a review on iTunes. All of those help with our visibility. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. That's Suck it. it easy. Go to bed. <laughs> Thank you.